Hello crafty friends, welcome to this video in which I craft by the seat of my pants and make this card for you. So when I started this card, I didn't really have a design in mind. I just switched on the camera, sat down and grabbed dies that were within arm's reach that spoke to me in the moment, I suppose. So the first one I grabbed was this border die. I think this is from Creative Expressions and it came from a charity shop with a load of similar style border dies. And I used this to cut a line of holes about a third of the way from the left hand side of a panel of linen textured cardstock. The card I end up making today is approximately five by seven inches and this panel was about a quarter of an inch smaller all the way round. No, maybe an eighth of an inch smaller all the way round. So once I'd cut the little holes in my panel, I poked them out with my tweezers. And then I ran an embossing tool around the outside of the whole panel to bevel the edges and give it that die cut look. I just think this makes trimmed panels look a little bit more polished and finished and ties them in with other elements of the card. After that, I grabbed a scrap of linen textured cardstock and brushed on some salvage patina. Again, this was a, an ink that was just sitting on my desk from a previous card, and it's one of my favourite colours, probably my favourite Distress Oxide colours. So I thought, we'll go with that, and I blended it down a piece of cardstock. And after that, I spattered on some very pale gold metallic watercolour and dried it with my hairdryer. This is just going to create a little bit of background to put behind the holes. So I've got some lovely rich colour and metallic shimmer peeking through the holes that I created in my front panel. When I add a bit of mixed media behind an aperture panel, I do like to add some foam tape in between. I just like that little bit of separation, the little bit of depth and dimension that having that gap there adds to the card. So I added some foam tape to the back of that front panel making sure that it was well supported and then I added the blue blendy metallic watercolour panel behind it. After adding a few bits of scrap paper to the back just to keep the whole thing level I used my ATG tape runner to add the panel to my card blank. Next I grabbed a tag die and cut tags from white cardstock and vellum with the vellum one, I did emboss it using a swirly whirly embossing folder and that gave it some lovely texture. But to add a bit of shimmer and shine and a little bit of colour, I brought in some gold gilding wax and added it with my finger covered in a paper towel because you're not supposed to get this stuff on your skin and just gently brushed it over the raised portion, trying to avoid getting the gilding wax on the background just for that little bit of difference and variation across the tag. And I really like the way this turns out. I think this embossed vellum with a bit of gold on top looks really pretty. After that, I decided to attach the white and the vellum tag together using a bit of embroidery thread, just white embroidery thread. But when I placed this on my card, it covered up too many of the blue holes. So eventually I ditch the white tag and just add the vellum tag. As I was flicking through my dies, I came across this ampersand die, which I really love and I don't use it nearly enough. So I thought, right, we're using that. So I just cut it out of white linen textured cardstock again. I did toy with the idea of adding some colour to the ampersand, but in the end I decided to keep it white so that it stayed very clean and very simple. And here's the point at which I separate the two tags. I just take out the thread and then put it back through just the vellum tag and lay it on top of my card front. And now you can still see some of those holes and some of the blueness from behind. 
The next die I grabbed was this leafy branchy die and I just cut the shape out of linen textured cardstock again. I did pop the whole thing onto a grip mat and just used the ink that was left on my brush to add a blush of the salvaged patina. And this brings the blue from the back to the front of the card. And to bring some of the gold to the front as well, I took a gold jelly roll pen and just did some little highlightish lines on the leaves of the branch. To adhere the tag, I use Crafter's Companion Tape Runner because it's very good at not showing through vellum. After that, I added the branch using tacky glue. I just popped a few dots on the backs of the leaves and then press that down on the right hand side of the card to balance the tag which I'd placed to the left hand side of the card. I press that down with some deli paper to stop myself getting glue all over my fingers and to add my ampersand I use some very thin strips of craft foam. If you have to send your cards through the post and you think all oh, this craft foam is going to up the postage too much you can always omit the extra dimension or you could just use maybe one or two layers of card behind your die cuts or your panels just to add a little bit of lift but not too much dimension for my sentiment i wanted to stamp something on a banner but i didn't just want a plain white banner i wanted to have a colored banner behind my sentiment banner if you see what i mean so i colored a bit of card with the ink that was on my blending brush spattered on some more gold cut a banner from that piece of card and then added it with tacky glue to the left hand side of my card and then I stamped my sentiment. It says love, kisses and birthday wishes. And I stamped this in black and then cut it out with that same banner die, which I then layered on top of the blue banner die that I'd already stuck down. And the blue banner die acts like a bit of a drop shadow for my sentiment piece. I did feel though that I did want a bit more blue on the left hand side on my card so I rummaged through my dies and found another little leafy branchy die thing and cut that from a bit of uh, bluey card that I just coloured in the same way that I've done all the colouring and then I added some gold to that as well just a little spot in each of the well they look more like berries than leaves on this one so there's gold on this one too I chopped off the stem, added some glue to it and then stuck it behind the ampersand to the left. So there's a bit of leafy blueness coming out of both sides of the ampersand and I think that balances everything nicely. As a finishing touch I add gold Nouveau drops, pale gold Nouveau drops in a diagonal from the left top to the right bottom and this is kind of opposite to the blue diagonal that's going on you've obviously got the blue holes going up the card but you've got a diagonal of bluey leaves from the right to the left so this is counter to that and again that balances the card nicely so that's this card done what do you think is it too random is having a tag an ampersand a banner holes in the background a leafy thing or a couple of leafy things really random or does it all come together quite nicely i i do like the way this card turned out it's not literal in any sense but it's visually appealing i think the ampersand means absolutely nothing but i just like the way it looks so do let me know in the comments what you think of the card and if you'd like to see more from me do subscribe and hit the notification bell and I'll see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.